All right, Team Blue, how are we doing? Great, doing working good? on onions. Good. We got the stock heating up. All right, Nadia's on the cauliflower. There is a definite contrast in the leadership between the blue team and the red team. Oh, good. Mike V is very vocal the way he's leading his team. He's encouraging them. You're rinsing it? You're rinsing it? Okay, you're getting the stock going? Good, good, good. Jonathan, on the other hand, I don't think that he is actually really showing them who's in charge. Becky, what's the ratio? What are you thinking for ratio? For the duck salad? Yeah. You need to put the garlic in with the mushrooms. Yeah, I'm going to throw it in. We're going to put this in there too? No. No? Well, that's just... too much moisture. It's be, be too oniony. Okay. Oh, yeah, but how many do you need? Do we need any onions? No onions. No onions in this one? To be quite honest, her contribution on the whole dish <laughs> She's almost a team captain. This needs a lot more cornstarch. Cornstarch? Yeah. OK, let's uh, let's get another slurry going. The eyes with the big pot. I got the muscle to pound out 120 chickens. What? So do I. <laughs> you guys need some help pounding? The process with this chicken is, one, flattening it out, getting it nice and thin. We need to stuff it with the Dixel, roll it up, bread it, and fry it, then get it in the oven. It's time consuming. I'm stressing about us not finishing in time. I've made like a whole head of roasted cauliflower, but never made this much before. I want to make new things that push my limits and show me what I'm really capable of. Good job, guys. Good job. Oh, yeah, that's working great. Yep. Yeah. I'm in charge of the red rice and the tahini. So if there are any mistakes, I'm taking the blame for it. While the blue team makes progress on their rice and cauliflower, the red team has spent so much time on their chicken that they're falling behind on their sides. You know what, I'm gonna get the Swiss chard at least chopped up. Our Swiss chard is something that I thought would be a really interesting addition to the dish. The worry about the chard is just, how do you know that there's enough for 101 people? One hour left, you have one hour left, 60 minutes! All right, guys, let's keep chatting. I'm very concerned about the red team. They need to start cooking this chicken in the next 20 minutes. Otherwise, they're never going to have it ready. I'm going to start rolling. Becky's going to start rolling. OK. Jonathan. Hey, uh, is the chicken cooking? It's going to be in there in just a minute. Just a minute? You only have one hour left, OK? OK. One hour left. The chicken is not cooking. Chef Elvin is shocked and quite concerned that there is no chicken cooking at this point. I'm feeling a little anxious. Do not feed these people raw chicken. It's taking too long. Come yes, on, chef. you gotta go faster. Come on, faster, faster. We have a lot to do. Come on. Fine. Are we baking these first? No, we're pan frying them first. In a competition like this, we need our leader to push us forward. Uh, has anyone seen parchment paper? I think what's rattling Jonathan the most is the sheer number of components that we have to work with. We need 60. 60. It's kind of hard to keep track of, but he's the one with Team Captain written on his apron. Whoa, whoa! Get them in, get drumsticks on one side. What are our temperatures like, Kagan? Huh? In the, oh, dude, like 155, 160. I'm extremely sure of all the chicken that I'm cooking, but someone's gonna leave a burner and then run away to go check something out. I'm on it, peppers! And then some of it burns. They flip it over, they think it's done, so there's not enough quality control. Kagan, how are your, how are your drums there, buddy? Ah, uh, they're fine. Keep an eye on the, the skin crisp quick, eh, dude? I know, I know, but... Reem's okay, she'll call for help if she needs. I'm the floater, man, I gotta float. The workload is unbalanced. There are three people working on the chicken. I am working on the rice, on the tahini. The pressure is too much for me. Potatoes are in, guys! We need to start breading and frying. Yes. The pounding took forever, but we can create an assembly line and bread it to get it in the pan, and then we have to get it in the oven. If we can pull this off, it's going to be a huge success, and it's going to be tasty. OK, come behind you, more chicken. Let's get it on. OK. 30 minutes, you have 30 minutes left. Let's get it done. You guys are doing awesome. Let's keep it up, OK? The servers are coming in 30 minutes. We need to have it ready. You know, Kagan continues to leave a mess, uh, just an absolute disaster zone wherever he goes. That's now leaving the blue team with way less space to do their plating. Guys, as soon as we're all done, let's tidy up so we can just pump the plates out. Clean that front station if we can. I turn around, and it looks like a Tasmanian devil has run around our kitchen. It looks disastrous. The lunch bell rings for the volunteers and their families. 
I want to feed them the best meal they've had because they absolutely deserve it. As the red team finally pulls out their first batch of chicken breasts. You and Eugene and Jen up front plating. Okay, keep it going. Meanwhile, the blue team is already starting to plate their dark meat. Like this? Okay. Smear. I don't like the smear. Let's just follow, no, let's follow what Kagan's doing, okay? Kagan's our, our plating guy and we're gonna do what he does. Sure. Okay. I like this power. Ten minutes, you have ten minutes left. Come on, let's go. Get plating. Look, look how they're mashing the potatoes here. Jen is using the bottom of a bowl. Desperation is the mother of invention. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, guys, I gotta get it together. These volunteers are giving people a great opportunity to start a new life. They deserve a hot meal. Guys, this needs to be more organized. Are you doing the smear? What are you I'm doing? doing the smear, but I'm fast, and so I'm going back and forth. Blue team, red team, the servers are coming. Your plate has to be ready. Come on, guys, it's looking great. Keep it going, keep it going. Do we have any more? From this end, please, from this end, please. It's getting real now. The servers are here. It's pretty crazy. Come on, guys. Let's push, Kagan, Kagan, we gotta push, man. Okay, we need more of these greens. Where are the... I know, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm looking at the Swiss chart, and I'm starting to think we might not actually have enough. Ah. They're slipping behind. If we don't make more sides, one of us are going home tomorrow. The servers Bring are waiting. to the front. We're ready at a Swiss shard, and there isn't any more in the kitchen. We're going to have to improvise here. I'm going to have to go kale. Try not to be too messy, guys. The service is up. Thank you. Take a deep breath. We're doing all right. There's no rice, There's on, no that rice on that plate. Finish hard here, guys. I know it's not perfect, but let's finish hard. Thank you. We're done. Done? Was that ever fun? Hey, 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 Michael, 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 come here. Look at this. I warn you, two unfinished dishes. They're raw chicken. It's clear as day. There's, there's blood in the bone. It's not cooked well. They were enjoying it, but they can't finish it. My stomach is in knots. You can't serve undercooked chicken. This is unacceptable. Can we bring these people more chicken? What do you think? Yes. Yes. What do you think? We'd love Let's to bring clean more the chicken. Plates. I don't want us to be in the pressure test. It was two plates, and it's horrible, and it's unacceptable, but I feel confident that the rest of it is going to be cooked perfectly. All right. All right. Did we in the blue kitchen apologize immensely, and hope that this one is more to your liking. Much better, right? Yeah. Much better. Good job, good job, good job. We're good, guys. Okay. That's beautiful. Nice job. Are you ready to find out who won? Yes, Chef! The winning team, by a whopping 31 votes, wow. is... The Red Team! Yeah! yeah. 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 The Red Team wins. Yeah. I can't believe it. Amazing. I am... Very excited. Good job, guys. Awesome job, guys. Proud of the team. Proud of myself, okay. too. I think there's three great opportunities to flavor your donut. One is with the batter itself. Number two is some kind of a filling. It could be a jam, a jelly, a pastry cream. And the third is whatever you decide to decorate and garnish the outside with. We're making a yeasted donut with apple pie filling, a brown sugar caramel glaze, candied bacon, and cinnamon cereal. Bacon, lots of bacon. So you need the milk? Yeah, two cups of milk each. And Eugene, he thinks differently than everybody else. This donut is gonna look like a bagel. It's gonna have a beautiful glaze on top. Perfect. Poppy seeds to look like the top of a bagel. And inside, it's gonna have a whipped cream that looks like eggs and candied bacon. Here we go. For somebody who is creative like myself, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Butter's going. Our idea is to go with bananas and a yeast donut, a cinnamony, salty, chocolatey kind of finish. I'm getting on bananas then. Yes, go. Salt and chocolate is like a killer combo. Okay, salt's done. So many apples. With just two hours before their booths open for business, speed and efficiency are crucial. That sounds good. I like that knife skills. He's a ninja. 200 donuts, that is a lot of donuts. It takes organizing, planning, and meticulous execution. Push it, push it, push it. Perfect donuts require perfect dough, but one team is having trouble rising to the occasion. Becky, how's it going with the dough here? Pretty good, I'm just waiting for it to bloom. So I look in the mixers expecting to see nice bubbles to show me that the yeast is activated and I see nothing. How much longer do you need? Well, I guess just once it starts bubbling, right? Yeah. 
Perfect. Was our water too hot? A little bit. Hot water is the worst thing for yeast because it literally kills it. Are you worried that it's not going to bloom because it's too hot? A little bit. Yeah, should we start again? Hey, I'm not the baker. This is why I picked Becky. It's super annoying to screw up right out of the starting blocks. And I know right now that I killed the yeast. This is a critical mistake too early on in the game, and I'm not happy about it. So, Becky, I understand you are in charge of making the donut batter. Yeah. How's it going? Uh, I just had to restart because the water was too hot and the yeast died. So how did you adjust? I uh, did, like, half cool water, half warm water to make it warm. Bring the temperature down to activate the yeast? Yeah. Wonderful. How do you think Marissa is doing so far as a leader? She's doing really well. She's really vocal, and wherever we need her, she's there. Becky, quit chatting. Back to work. <laughs> See? The boss. <laughs> Let's get through this dough part. We knew this was going to be a tricky part. But once it's up, we're good. Yeah, exactly. Here, Captain, try this. Oh, my god. That is incredible. We have the right flavor profile. Now it's just time to pump these donuts out. Let's give one uh, a test fry just to see where we're at, see if it yeah. puffs up. I can do that. Is it puffing? Not massively. The donuts are just kind of looking like hockey pucks. Yeah, see, some of these are just like, look at that. If we can't fix this, game over. Some of them are like bricks. I don't really fully know what's going on, so I decide to take a thermometer and just test the temperature of each one of the fryers. The, the oil is not hot enough. Did you get it up? Yeah. We crank up the fryers, and I think that's the right call. You got 60 minutes left. Hundreds of dog lovers are coming. So that's four layers. I'm extremely organized. I've planned out everything we need to do from the first minute the time starts. So you're the high concept guy. First, you gave us a vegetarian bone marrow. <laughs> yeah. So now you're going to give us the <laughs> breakfast bagel. I noticed that all three of you are working on the bacon right now. Should you be doing other things so as well? Our game plan is solid. We need to rest the dough for 30 minutes. And during those 30 minutes, we have everything planned out. Remember, OK, get those sales. Thank you, Chef Alvin. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Let's go, guys. Now, the red team haven't even started to assemble donuts. OK, you know? OK, demo. We're still missing the yolks, and we're still missing another glaze. Yep, can you move that? And we still have not seen a demo of what this donut needs to look like assembled. I knew this was going to happen. We have a very hungry crowd behind us. I can tell you, right now, I see the green team. The table is full of donuts. I can see some going on in the blue team. Nothing whatsoever on the red team. When I release the hounds, I can tell you one thing. They're going to be in trouble. One minute, get those donuts out! We decided to forego the yolk just because we don't have enough time. OK, Eugene, seriously, you should have had everything prepared for quality control. Oh. Are you doing this? Yes, I'm, I can do both. pass it over. Be nice, be kind. I am so proud of my team right now. Becky recovered from that early mistake with the dough, and she's pounding out those donuts. Can you run these up, yeah. please? OK, you're going to need that big bowl here. Eugene, we need tops. All right, dogs, tell your owners to fetch now! Who wants bacon? Come on. Everybody over to Team Who Red. Who wants bacon? Come on over to Blue. We got plenty ready for you. Who wants some apple pie? Come and get it. It's hot and ready. Can I get you one? One, yeah, two, sure. ten. The dog lovers will now choose between the red team's play on a breakfast bagel with orange whipped cream and candied bacon. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Thank you so much. You're so welcome. The blue team's caramelized banana donut with chocolate glaze and banana cream filling. There you go, sir. Enjoy. And the green team's apple pie donut with candied bacon and crunchy cinnamon topping. Come back for more. There's plenty. OK, Eugene. The demand is there, and we're running out of donuts. So we're going to get you some fresh ones whipped up right here. Eugene, let's build these, buddy. Let's build these ones. No, those ones are not good. Do not use those. I see the lineup, and all I know is that we need to get these donuts done and ready and served to these people immediately. We were told to come back and get the one that he likes the best. Oh, it just happens to be this one. This is amazing. Keep it going. Keep it going. After a costly delay in their assembly process, the red team is back in business. We had some donuts put in the oil and uh, it got forgotten about. We'll taste them and make sure that they're not burnt. And a bottom. Bottom. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. OK. There we go. All right, thank you so much.
Hi, love your hair. Thank you. Which one do you like the best? I chose the red team, and I think it's uh, pretty fantastic. I chose the red donut, and no, I'm not satisfied. It's not really a donut. It's more like a bagel. Yeah, the red flavors are they're really good, yeah. Red donut is too sweet. How about you? I think I'm going for the green team. I really like the apple pie inside, filling inside the donut. It was warm, it was nice. On a cold day, it was good. I'm eating the green team's donut right now. It's good, but it fillings a little much. There's like a lot of apple. Yeah, I chose the green donut, and I really like it because it's got like a really interesting flavor palette, and I really like bacon. Try all the donuts, and the green is my favorite. I prefer the blue. The banana donut. Except for the one piece of banana on there, I didn't really taste any banana. I actually really like the banana one. Like he the gave one. it to me fresh, so it was warm still. It was nice. nice. And the cream inside. Really good. Don't be shy! Don't be shy! Get up here! With customers still coming, the teams hustle to sell as many donuts as possible. Jen is slinging donuts like crazy. I start manning the fryer and start getting in a good rhythm, and we start actually pumping out some serious donuts. I'm feeling good. I think we have this in the bag. I'm, I have an uncooked donut. It's raw in the middle. That is not acceptable. Andy? Yes? Look at that. That's hard. Feel it. That's raw. Yes, sorry, Chef. I'm going to cook them through more. This is no good. I want beautiful donut, I and I want it now. I'm pissed about this raw donut. That made me really panic. We're screwed. Go fetch. <laughs> come on, Baba. Come on. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. And the winning team is Woo! the green team. Yeah! <laughs> we won. <laughs> Marissa, you and your team sold 132 donuts. Amazing. Well done. So Becky. You have a huge job ahead of you and one less team member. So tell you what, we brought one more home cook with us to add to your team. Oh my god. Who is here? Since the last time we saw you, we invited three home cooks back to compete in a redemption challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and one of those home cooks cooked their way back to earn a white apron. That's amazing. Someone's coming back. Expect the unexpected. Oh Please help us welcome back the final member of the blue team. Kagan. Oh! <laughs> I'm back. Hi, guys. Kagan's back. Congrats. Thank you. It's pretty annoying, but we'll deal with it. It's good to be here. Are you ready to be a valuable member of Becky's team? Absolutely. I'm going to do everything Becky tells me to do. Well, you should, because the losing team today will have to face the dreaded pressure test. Do you want to start preparing the venison now? Yes, I will start on the venison right away. The first course is a panzered venison with a roasted celeriac puree, romanesco, and a jus. For the first course, I put Marissa on the meat because she's quite strong with red meat. Kagan and Jen are doing the veg prep. Prep. Tons of prep. And then I'm going to start the jus. What do you think about that mix? Can I smell? I'm a little nervous about Becky and Kagan working together. When Kagan left the MasterChef Canada kitchen, he threw some shots directly at Becky. I'm going to salt them first and then crust them. Pepper? Just because I need a ton of salt. I have no pepper in here, but it's Put some pepper in there. So I'm hoping that Kagan's time off, uh, he ate a little bit of humble pie during that time. My role is doing what I'm told. <laughs> I'm not forcing my ideas on Becky because my strategy is to help her achieve her vision. He seems like he's changed. He's not like as full of himself. <laughs> totally on good behavior right now. Absolutely. The home cooks are making an artistic tasting menu inspired by Tom Thompson and the group of seven. Gotta get rid of all the blood. It's not great. We are not serving our prestigious guests bloody meat. Okay, somebody garnish. I'll keep cleaning. You just need two more, Eugene. Let's go, let's go. They're about to come. With the judges and VIP guests eagerly waiting, the teams put their final touches on their first courses. Surface up. Way to go, guys. Round one's done. Great, great teamwork, guys. Great job. Welcome to all of you. Inspired by the group of seven, our first course comes from the land. From the red team, we have venison tartare with a berry sauce. And the blue team has a pan-seared venison on a celeriac puree. Bon appétit. Thank, Thank you. you.
Michael, what are you saying about the presentation? I thought the red team had the better presented dish. Very colorful, very inviting. It has a little bit more finesse and polish to it. But I gotta tell you, I like the simplicity of the blue team. It really honored the ingredients. Denise, can I get your take on both dishes? I'm really enjoying the red team, the venison tartare, and the blue team. I love the celeriac puree. I agree with you 100%. So, Lloyd, which dish are you leaning towards more? I think maybe the red team is one up on presentation, but the blue team taste and texture and everything I like better. Shape-wise, I mean, it's kind of cool. As far as the paintings go, well, my piece of venison looks a great deal like Lauren Harris's mountain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. We're really going to have to hustle on the last dish. We got the carrots on. They're starting to braise. Beavers only have to be fried off. The final course is a panzer duck breast, roasted beetroot, and blood orange and maple carrots. Kate, okay, what's the temperature at? 133. Becky puts me in charge of the duck breast. I came here to redeem myself. I need to prove to myself that I can handle the pressure. Stop touching. I messed up once, and I don't want to mess up again. We got this, guys. Strong finish, strong finish. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm working on the seventh quail, and we have less than 20 minutes. I'm not going to be able to do this in time. I'm going to make a decision, Mike and Nadia, work on everything else. You're going to help me debone the quail. I make a decision. I'm not going to serve seven debone quails and three with the bones. We need to get these done ASAP. You, what is happening? What, this is raw. How much time is that? 16 minutes. 16 minutes left. Raw quail. Chef Alvin is losing his mind at us. What are you thinking of? I think you should be pan sear it. Pan sear it now. Come and get it on the pan right now. Go, go. Chef yells at us to get them into hot pans. Get them on, get them on, come on. We're on the verge of complete chaos. Two pens, two free pens, come in here. Did you hear that? <laughs> They're in trouble. OK, we got an open pan. Let's, let's take one of these two and divide it up. Bring one of these down here. If we can't cook these quail, we're going to the pressure test. Come on, get them here, now. Oh my god, what have we done? OK, let's add more butter into the pans, guys. It'll help cook it faster. The only way we'll get this quail done is if we have more butter and are able to baste them. More. More butter over here, please. Yeah, coming now. Blue team, five minutes out. Let's get the plating going. Oh, those look nice. Honestly, the duck is probably the best I've ever done. Beautiful, Kagan. I'm going to get a duck tattoo, I think, when I go home. Yeah. Perfect. I got nice brown on mine. Mine are looking great. Amazing. How are the other ones looking? They're good. They're getting nice and brown. We're doing whatever it takes to make sure this is exactly how we envision. Beautiful. These look good. These look great. And it's coming together. Beautiful, guys. It's a piece of artwork. All right, guys, that's good. Great job, everybody. OK, send them out. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Bring it in. Guys. Team red all the way. That was a sprint. That was more intense than it needed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. For the third and final course, it's inspired by the sky. From the red team, we have deboned quail stuffed with caramelized shallots and pecans. And from the blue team, we have warm spiced duck breast with roasted beets and braised carrots. Bon appetit. I think both teams have done a great job on the presentation. The blue team, I think, is much brighter and more punchy colors. I sort of lean towards that. I love the use of braised carrots, the roasted beets, and the wonderful aroma that comes out from that duck and the warm spices. Very savory, very rich. Well, if I were judging the red team's quail dish on quantity, they wouldn't be doing too well right now. However, the flavors that they've achieved are exceptional. This dish is really beautifully conceived. Sometimes quail's a little hard to eat. And this was done really beautifully. I have nothing but praise. I was so excited by both dishes. The color on the blue team was so eye-catching. And yet for the red team, I really have to say, as a girl from the prairies, that's what I saw on the plate. I saw a part of Canada on this dish, and I thought that was just really so beautiful because the group of seven was about representing Canada in such a beautiful way. And the winner is... This is the moment I've been waiting for. I've never been more proud. Congratulations, Red Team. You will automatically advance to the top seven in this competition. Top seven again. <laughs> so Andy, which home cook do you see as your biggest threat? The individual has a very similar flavor profile that I do. Eugene. Interesting. I see myself in the finale because I have the creative and innovative side, and I've proven myself in this competition multiple times. Who are you going to pair with Eugene? 
This individual has a very different style of communication and cooking than Eugene. I think this could cause them both to stumble. I'm gonna have Becky join Eugene. Oh. I'm putting all my faith in Eugene's palate right now. The only reference I have to Asian street food is cookbooks and things. Andy, who is your next biggest threat? Michael G. Cheers. Who will you pair with Michael G? Kagan, you can join Michael G. Andy, you suck. Kagan is messy, cluttered, and unfocused. I'm very organized, but take what you got. His mistake, bro, his mistake. Bring it in. Sure, we got this. <laughs> that leaves Nadia and Marissa. How do you two feel about working together? I think we'll be all right. We'll be just fine. Nice, 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 nice work. Michael G is moving like a bolt of lightning. Three, four, five. Right. It's actually a little intimidating. I've never really watched him cook before. Just calm down. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. We're good. It's looking good, ladies. It's looking good. Step number two is make your bao bun. Get that warm water in there, Nadia. We got to activate the yeast. And I'm expecting to see a light fluffy bow bun. It has to be perfect. What's our next move after this? Let's take a head. We're playing chess. You think for that for a second. I can think about this. Come on, Eugene. No, it's not happening. What did you do that for? Out of the gate, Becky and Eugene seem to be really slow. They're just not getting into the rhythm. It just has to be around the 50 number, OK? OK, Eugene? I need to keep Eugene on track, because he could be doing so much more. Went to where? To the bridge. I've never seen right. Becky be quite so vocal as this. Eugene doesn't seem to be moving fast enough. Get the waist scales. Waist scales. Switch! Yes, go! Eugene! How's the yeast looking? Marissa's being really quiet. The yeast looks activated. We're good. She's not really giving me a response. I need to know so that when we tag out, I can then pick up where she left off. Marissa, as soon as you're done, we need to chop up the onions. Just watch that clock for me. Marissa and Nadia, but I can see them butting heads. I don't have much to say other than work, work, work. Tag team is a great challenge. It really shows us how they work as a team. They have to trust one another. What next, Eugene? Stick it into the oven at 100 degrees. Trust and communication is key. You had about 300 of uh, livers, so you need about 150 grams of butter. Yeah. So now Kagan has moved on to the chicken liver, which is an essential part of the banh mi. Take a little bit of it out, because otherwise it's not going to set. Michael G is doing an amazing job of keeping me on task. Quick, double time. Spatula's right here if you need it, but we don't need a ton of it. Run it, run it, run it. Tap the tray as you're going. It'll knock flat. Nice. Beautiful. Eugene, Eugene. Becky, onions for the pate. They're in there. They're in there? OK, perfect. How's she doing? She's doing great. Um, she's pushing faster than I've seen her move in the past. I think she actually moves faster than you. Yeah, she does. She doesn't waste any movements. Good luck. Thank you, chef. Less than 10 minutes left. There's a lot to be done in this kitchen. They got to deep fry the bananas. Put the bananas in the fryer. Bananas in the fryer. Gently, we only have three. Dip and fry. I am extremely impressed with how well Kagan is listening to me and how well we're working as a team right now. And you can't forget about the jellyfish salad. Marissa is cutting the peppers for the jellyfish salad, but they are not evenly cut. Between the slicing and julienning that needs to go on, you need to have razor-sharp knife skills. It's a huge part of this challenge. What? You got it. You got this. You got this. You got this. Every time I'm tapping back in, I'm just trying to figure out where Marissa is at. I wish that she was being vocal about what she was doing. There's things that are prepped and things that are half ready, and I need to get things finished. Prep the jellyfish. OK. Move quickly, Eugene. She's making me move fast. Come on, Eugene. Quickly. Quiet Becky is gone. Get the other piece and slice it in half. You can hear her just screaming at Eugene to pick it up, to push it, and it's fantastic. You only need two. You only need two. Oh, my god. Moment of truth about to happen here. Michael's going to check his pork. Come on, man. Oh, his hands are shaking. Ha! Ah. Looks like Michael G has taken his own advice. He's burning his fingers now. Got it, got it. Yeah, Mike. Switch! Switch! Eugene! I have 
so many dishes to prepare in so little time. Oh my God. Marissa is very slow. I don't know if we're gonna get all the components on. I think Marissa and Nadia are too far behind right it's now. It's really coming down to the wire. This is it, this is all you, Becky. You got this. Right now, I feel like I don't have any time to do a bananas. Like you broke one in half so that we have two pieces versus just one. It's kind of ingenious. Beautiful. One minute, you should be plating! In the glass jar, that's for the balls. Right in front, right down. In front here, man. Keegan is plating his takoyaki. Other way around. The crappy side on the bottom. 30 seconds, you have 30 seconds left! I take really hot pork, stick it in a really hot bun, and pretty much just launch it onto a plate. Good job, good job, that's good. Ten, nine, You have to get on the eight, plate, let's go, come on. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, heads up! Yes! Come here! Ooh. I'm so disappointed at our platter. We have two out of the five things burnt, which is a really poor percentage to have. We have not fully replicated the Asian street platter. We're not happy with it. Michael and Kagan, would you please bring up your Asian street market platter? I'm a little worried. This is not a perfect platter. I'm just hoping that these little mistakes don't send us home. Andy. You put these two together as part of your strategy. It was a bit of a social experiment to see how these two work together, and they were pretty impressive to watch down there. Let's start with the banh mi. Looks like you've got all the elements here. Let's see how they all taste. Chicken is very flavorful, cooked very nicely. I think the liver pate is spot on. It is tasty. It is the right texture. Well done. Who takes ownership of that? The uh, team effort. There's no iron team here. But there's an iron win, and that's what we're after. The takoyaki balls are looking a little dark on the outside in a couple of areas. Seasoned well, wonderful savoriness to them. Taste is good. Look at the bow. Those buns look pretty decent. Light, fluffy. Melt in the mouth pork belly. Yes. Boy, is that good. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Chef. It was a tough challenge. And it was good to see you two work together the way you did. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you, Chef. I think we had a lot of mistakes. Our bananas are toast. Our takoyaki balls are crisp around the edge. But our flavors are there, and I hope they'll pull through on those areas. Andy. You consider Eugene your biggest threat. Were you surprised at Becky? To hear her yelling in the kitchen, I haven't seen that yet. And it just proves that she's an even bigger threat than I already thought she was. Let's start with the barmy. Chicken cooked perfectly. Nice season. Who did the pate? I did. OK. Maybe a little bit too much onion. Let's look at these jellyfish salad. Becky, do you eat a lot of jellyfish? No, I've never had it. And you, Jane? I eat it almost at every family dinner. Did you try the jellyfish? No. Did you taste this? I don't remember, but I don't believe I did. You were lucky, because the taste, it's all right. It could have used a bit more sugar, a bit more kick, a bit more spice. Now, bow. That pork belly. Perfect. Now, who's responsible for that? Eugene. Eugene. So he did one thing, right, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> who's responsible for this? Both of us. Have you ever made takoyaki before? Um, I've made it once before. You made it once. It looks good. I mean, you got the color, you got the caramelization. You know something? What? You got this right. It is crispy on the outside, it's tender, it's well cooked. You did a good job. Finally, what is this? We had a shortcut. How many bananas did you fry up? One. You hit the spot. Unfortunately, 
There's not enough of it. Please go back to your station. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. We were missing a couple components. This is an elimination challenge. There could be more than one of us going home. Marissa and Nadia, please bring up your Asian street market platter. We didn't even finish our, our plates, so it doesn't look good. I don't know if it tastes good. You're disappointed, aren't you, both of you? It's an understatement, Jeff. Andy, is this a result that you anticipated when you positioned Nadia and Marissa together? I was really rooting for these two. I think time just got the best of them. Let's taste this bomb me. Who seasoned the chicken? Uh, I did the marinade on the chicken. Did anyone season it? Uh, I guess not. It's bland. I mean, look at that. It's missing the pate in critical areas. Whose fault was that? I put the pate on the baguette. Who made the pate? Nadia prepared the livers. Tastes great. Thank you, I chef. wish there was more of it, but the flavor profile is perfect. It's delicious, well balanced, great seasoning. The jellyfish salad. Was this a group effort? Marissa prepped the julienne peppers, and then I assembled it. She just did the peppers. This is me. This tastes a lot better than it looks. The peppers are a little bit roughly cut. You can see that? It was a time crunch. Marissa, it's really sloppy, and it's not what I would expect from you at this stage of the competition. I agree with you, Chef. This was an extremely difficult tag team challenge. It was tough for us to decide which team was best. But after weighing all the pros and cons, we decided the strongest tag team was... Kagan and Michael G. Wow. What's up, guys? Oh. Yeah, dude. You will be captains oh. on the opposing teams in a restaurant takeover. Oh, love it. I get to be a team captain. That is a dream, a goal. Yes. I want a restaurant one day, so I want to know what it's like to run one. I think I'm going to be an excellent team leader. Wow. I'm just going to take that communication that I had with Mike G and have that same level of communication with my team in the restaurant challenge. Michael G, we flipped a coin earlier on, and you won. So you get first pick. Who's it going to be? I want someone who's going to be able to work extremely hard. I choose Andy. Thank you. Welcome. I think we make a good team, and really looking forward to working for him. Kagan, who is your first pick? This person is incredibly talented, and they know a diverse range of flavors. I pick Eugene. Let's do this. Kagan has uh, good plating skills. However, he's a mess in the kitchen, and he does not have the best memory either. That's making me nervous. Michael G? My last pick is someone that I know works extremely well on a team, so I choose Nadia. Michael G is a great motivator, but when he's under too much pressure, he just gets flustered. Becky, are you as shocked as I am that you're the last one standing here? No, they're probably scared that I'm gonna yell at them. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, please join the blue team. Happy to have you. I'm thrilled to have Becky on my team. I think the kitchen is where Becky was just born to be. She's just got this fire. Team on three, one, two, three, team! With less than an hour before service, the teams prep their beef tartare and octopus a la plancha. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's keep working. There is a lineup outside now, guys. Are you ready for this? Yes, Are you amped up? Yeah. Guys, get organized on your stations here. Yep. Clean up what your stuff you have going. Welcome to Copatine. All right, Michael G. Kagan, the restaurant is filling up. No one stands still the entire service. You know, guys, focus, but let's have some fun, OK? You guys ready? Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. Yes, chef. Red team, you have your first order. Chef. One octopus, yes, one tartare. One octopus, one tartare. For the appetizers, I want Andy to be working on the cooking of the octopus. I want Nadia to be working on the mix and the marinade for the steak tartare. And I'm going to be putting together the final composition of these dishes. You let me know when you need me, OK? Yep, I will. It's looking great. All right, blue team, your first order is four octopus, two beef tartare. Eugene? Four octopus, two tartare. Bring it in. Becky is handling the tartare dish. Eugene's role is to cook the octopus. My role is to plate the octopus. Kagan, you have to clean the plates before they go out. Yes, Becky. All right, red team, ordering two octopus, two tartare. Two octopus going on now. 
It's pretty stressful having so many orders coming in, but I know that as a team, we're gonna be able to pull through. Where's my tartar going with this octopus, guys? Right here, chef. Red team, nice plates. Is this beginner's luck? Pretty awesome. Thank you very much, chef. Red team, nice looking appetizers. Thank you, really chef. great. We are doing very well. We are talking, we are communicating. How can I help here? How can I help? We are working like a proper kitchen in my eyes. So blue team, the red team is already pushing apps out. They're on their second table already. You have not given me one table yet. Eugene, where are those octopus? They're coming. Two minutes. For octopus. Perfect. Plate them. Put them down. Octopus down. This is our first plating, and Kagan's already asked me to do the plating instead now. 20 minutes on your first table, Kagan. We're going to pick it up from here. Things are feeling a little bit chaotic. Becky, how we doing? Two more plates, nearly up. Blue team, you got to hustle. You still owe me four octopus. Kagan, you're getting absolutely crushed right now I, by the I red see team. That. I need my team to move a lot faster. They're just yelling, frantically moving. OK, careful. And it seems like they're not actually doing anything. You owe me four more octo right now. Four more octo? There's no clear option for what to do next. Like, I don't know how to fix this. Kagan, do you need help with the octopus? Yes. Kagan, is this finished? Greens. The greens. Kagan, the greens. Kagan. Kagan, they're making me wait for plates, and then they come up, and they're not even that great. The pressure is getting to me. Kagan, blue team, ordering three octopus. Yep. You guys got to hustle now. Do you okay. need help on octopus? I'm There's going no... to start octopus right now. Hey. The octopus dish is way more work than I thought it would be. We just got the order, Becky. Don't worry. Every little element takes a few seconds to do. I need that octopus now. Flip that, flip that, flip that. I need help plating. OK. Mike G is a phenomenal captain. I uh, don't like that one. Too skinny. Do it again. He is focused. He's got an amazing plan. He's communicating well. Are they good? You guys chef? are doing a great job. Thank you, chef. They're ready for service. Kagan, take a look at this plate. This is your competition. I'll give you a recap. You owe me four tartars, two octo. Four tartars. And your apps are all out. Help us finish these plates. Becky, beautiful plating here. Thank you. All right, guys, great job on the appetizers. And the appetizer round, our team has done a terrific job of really owning the challenge. Nice work, red team. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. Thank you, Chef. We did a good job, guys, but we just have to be cleaner. Up. Yes. All right, blue team, listen up. Ordering two lamb, two sea bream. Two lamb, two sea bream. Two Do more sea bream, that's nine in total. Eugene, that's nine total. This is the first time I've ever cooked sea bream. This is crazy. Let me see that fish. Overcooked? Overcooked. Okay. Eugene, it's overcooked. We need to redo it. So, Eugene, you just wasted five pieces of fish. I'm sorry, Chef. Right now, all we have is one out of the five orders for the first table. It feels like we're starting the challenge over again now. Nadia, here comes lamb down. Eat it straight. Okay. Let me get Red team, your fish is going to get cold while you're waiting yes, for chef. your lamb to be cooked, right? coming down right now. If you guys give me cold food in the past, it's going to go right back to you. Move a plate. Move a plate. Let's go. Come on. The orders are coming in. Five sea bream. It's absolutely chaotic. Red team, I need that lamb yesterday. I'm the fish it. has already gone out. Very hungry. When are you going to give me five bream and one lamb? As soon as we can get the, the bream from over there. Eugene, how many clams are in this pan? pan? I have four on no. the pan. Eugene, listen to what I'm saying before you answer. How many is in this pan? How many orders? It's for five. OK. Becky, are you in charge now? It seems like it. it. Seems like it, right? Looks like it. I'm having a hard time balancing all of these different things. I can't pay attention to Chef Claudio, and I can't pay attention to the rest of my team. Eugene, we yeah. have two orders of clam and only one fish. OK, four fish are about to come. Eugene, you got that? Kagan. Take control. Becky, do you want to take charge? Do you need me to? Eugene listens to you, and you're more composed. Eugene, I'm in charge now. I'm excited to be team captain. I'm going to whip these boys into shape. Thank you, Becky. The best chance we have of winning is with Becky at the helm. Ordering four lamb. Four lamb. Andy, After that, you're going to give me Five lamb, one bream. OK, I'm coming down. OK, five lamb, season them all. Yep, These are seasoned trays. These are raw. This is clean for done. Balute. Who's got balute? How many lamb total? 13 lamb. 13 lamb. 13. Timing is off. We're in the weeds right now. We need to work harder. OK, Nadia, faster and get out. 
Take the pan with you. We gotta work through this. Tegan, where's the lamb at? Two minutes on the lamb. Get the plate ready. Are the lentils done? Yes. She's gonna save him right here, and then I'm gonna get the fish. Need to cook more. The key to running a professional kitchen is yelling. <laughs> Two lamb. Nice looking lambs, Becky. Thank you. How long in the bream? The bream is about two minutes away. Becky's team captain, and it's going much smoother. I need those two breams, fast. Yeah. What's going on, red team? You start off very strong, We're still and now it's it, slipping guys. away from you. I am getting extreme amounts of fire in my station. Oil, flame, does not go well together. Give me that bream. Are you cooking it or cremating it? This is burning my land. This is putting me way back. I need help down here, bad. Michael G, what is going on with you? You're burning land. Take a deep breath. My order of land is all burnt, which means that I'm four orders in the weeds right now. Things are totally hitting the fan. Stop taking my stuff. Mike, calm, 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 calm. calm. Andy notices this, comes right over to me, and says, calm down. We got this. We can do it. Relax. Yeah, you got this, Mike. Don't get rattled. Don't get rattled. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Andy saved me. We've got nine more lamb and three sea bream. We've got four up right now. I'm waiting on the lentils to cook. Get your garnishes. Get your lentils. Yep. They're all ready to go. OK, good, 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 good. We're, we're good. We're good now. We're good. Enjoy this. Michael. Finally. Oh, wow. All right, Becky, you're doing a great job. Thank your, you. Your team is catching up now. That was a smart move by relinquishing control of your team and giving it to Becky. It was the right thing to do. I'm like, hashtag Team Becky right now. Just like, yes, you go, girl, yes. Two lamb, Becky, and you are clear. No, Eugene, top's up. <laughs> it feels amazing to be in a professional environment. Beautiful, guys. It feels really natural. I'm beyond proud right now. That's amazing. Thank you, chef. So here we have the sea bream from the red team and the sea bream from the blue team. The red team has done a great job caramelizing the skin on the sea bream. The skin on the fish is perfectly rendered. It's crispy. The potato done to perfection. I'm struggling to find a fault on the red team's sea bream. It's a really well executed dish. Let's try the blue. The skin on the sea bream again here is perfectly seared. Look at that. It's crispy, a little bit golden here on the edge. I can tell you for me, the fit. It's good, but it's slightly overcooked. All right, let's try the red team's lamb. Let's see how it's cooked. It's a bit over. This is more medium than yes. medium rare. So the red team missed the mark on the cook of the lamb. The lentil, the carrots, for me, they were perfect. Let's try the blue team's now. I got to tell you, the blue team looks looks a bit tired to me. It does not have the sophistication that I showed them originally when I gave them a demo. Let's see what we get. The cook on the blue team's lamb is perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. The lentils, well seasoned. The seasoning on the lamb for the blue team is under seasoned. The red team and the blue team are very close in many elements of both their dishes. But for their first attempt in a professional kitchen, both teams, I thought, did very well. I agree. They did a great job. The team that's safe from elimination is... The red team. Yes! Woo! We won! Congratulations, red team. Please remove your apron and head upstairs. To the balcony I go. We deserve to win because we worked the best as a team and our flavors were on point.